Thanks for joining us here this week on windservetoots.com. It's been a little while. Uh, thank you to all of those who have been following me on YouTube. And I uh, wanted to just say I've been very busy, but hopefully I will be able to start cranking out these videos again for you to enjoy. Um, this new video is about Windows Server 8 or Windows Server 2012, uh, whatever you care to call it. The official name will be 2012. And what I wanted to do is I've seen a lot of articles out there and um, I wanted to take you through some of the new features in Windows 2012 that I found most inter interesting. And of course anybody who's been following the market will know that virtualization is really the large push. And so I wanted to take you through some of those things that uh, Windows Server 8 or 2012 will do for you as well as show you the new user interface this is what we have here um, essentially everything that we will do in managing um, Windows 2008 or I'm sorry Windows 2012 or Windows Server 8 will be through this visual pane or through PowerShell and so what we actually have here is two systems that we'll be looking at and what I wanted to just do is kind of just show you the interface um, it is very, very different, um, but it can be pretty helpful. As you can see, uh, we've got a couple informational warnings here. I've got some restarts going on, uh, manageability, oh, so a lot of stuff this particular server needs to restart. But essentially what Microsoft is attempting to do, whether you like the way it looks or, or you don't, um, because you either have this, the Metro interface, or you have the um, PowerShell uh, interface, and I believe that will be right here. So essentially you will either get a blue screen or you'll get this interface. And from here on out, this is how you will manage um, your servers. It does take a little bit of getting used to. Uh, you have the dashboard, which is like your heads up display. Uh, you can see this here. Um, it will give you warnings and notifications, things like this. It's telling us that this particular server, uh, I was just installing a role on here, it needs to be rebooted. I uh, can get rid of that. One cool thing that I really do like. Um, is that you can actually manage multiple systems right from this one all servers tab. So if I go over to my second server here, this is a different server. Um, actually, I'll just show you the host name. This is should be a little faster. This is uh, the second server that I have here. There we go. So this one is win 8 SRV 2 and I won't make you wait. This one is Win8 SRV01. So as you can see, I can manage both of these systems. I can um, go through, I can restart the server, I can push roles back and forth, I can um, connect via remote desktop connection. As you can see, it will bring that right up. So this is really a neat feature. Um, <clears throat> I do like this. It will make, if you have, you know, I don't know about, um, very large enterprise environments. Let's say you have um, one place where I worked, we had about 15 to 20,000 servers. Um, you know, you don't want to scroll through the list, but you could do win, uh, win 8 SRV02 and search for it there. So that's pretty neat. Um, I just don't know about the scalability and how well this will, um, will go if you've got, let's say, 15 to 20,000 servers. DNS is in this simple pane of glass here and it is a little bit unique. You can right click on your DNS server and you can do, where is it at here? I know it's over in tools, Active Directory Users and Computers. You would figure you would just be able to, oh, it's just down here. So you would just right click on this and simply go Active Directory Users and Computers. Now if you've been following along with the videos or if you're familiar with Windows Server Administration just in general, this will look familiar to you. So a lot of the underlying um, 
pieces and screens will not be foreign it's just how you will get to those screens which will take a little bit of readjustment so if you went through that learn learning curve of let's say Windows 2003 to 2008 and R2 you're gonna have to go through that learning curve again but one thing I did want to show you is, is pretty pretty impressed if we do uh, start task manager and we go to performance this server is actually a domain controller it's got a iSCSI target which we'll be talking about in just a little bit it's got file um, services running on it IIS and some remote desktop infrastructure services and this has the GUI on it and as you can see it's only using 1.1 gigabytes of uh, memory and it's actually using very very little uh, CPU time it's only using about 14 percent 20 percent of its CPU utilization um, which for a Windows box is pretty impressive if you were to remove the GUI off of it it would be even less so uh, just a couple of things that I wanted to go through um, I deal heavily in virtualization I happen to be more of a VMware person but there were some things as I was looking through and exploring this server um, option it, that really caught my eye and I want to show you two things to start off with um, sorry this is still getting used to this um, one is a very very powerful feature and that is if you've been doing server administration for a while you've known that uh, you have had to use if you wanted to do NIC teaming like Broadcom will have a customized driver or Intel will have a customized driver um, specifically so you can take two one gigabit Ethernet adapters and bond them into a single interface well Microsoft has done a really phenomenal thing here um, they've generated what's called the Microsoft Network Adapter Multiplexer Driver, right? And so when you go into your um, your network adapters uh, panel, you'll see this. If you have uh, a device, you'll need two Ethernet adapters, and this is what they look like once they've been teamed. As you can see, they don't have any of the you know normal things that you would expect. To be checked enabled they just have this uh, network adapter multiplexer protocol uh, enabled and so what that gives you is this actually gives you kind of like a virtual interface um, and you can go through and you can manage your IP addresses and all these sort of things on your teamed adapter instead of having to buy these very expensive Broadcom or Intel NICs really really cool feature um, I will imagine that many Windows administrators will be looking to use this to beef up their infrastructure really cool feature great job Microsoft on that um, and essentially how you would configure that is you uh, just come up and I believe you'd come here under all servers let me find it. Oh, this one I already have it um, enabled. So if I were to just go here on the second server and just say configure, and I just all I did was right click configure network teaming adapter, and it's just going to take it up for just a second here. And if I were to go through and actually um, have, let me see if I can just show you this real quick. I'm going to modify uh, some settings in VMware here. Um, I am actually going to go through and I'm going to add some Ethernet adapters here. And so you can hopefully see exactly how this would be completed. It's going to freeze up my screen just for a second while it's adding that virtual hardware, but this way you'll get to see exactly what it's doing. And I think you'll be pretty impressed by this, just how easy this is if you've actually ever had to do this with a another network adapter so we come back here let's do configure network adapter and teaming okay now as you can see I have two Ethernet adapters here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of them and just simply right click add to new team and as you can see it's pretty cool stuff I actually added two so I have three here you could add two three whatever you would like to do I'm just gonna add these two because I know they're not being used for anything else 
and you've got a couple of different um, options here but what we're going to call this we're, we'll call this team 2 that's what we'll call that we'll just do OK and this does take a little while um, oh wow that one was actually very quick um, and as you can see they come online just as a single network adapter so and I did this so I want you to take a look and see what I did um, this is actually pretty neat right so I'm on right now um, Win8 Servo 1. I actually did that on Win8 Servo 2. So I'm going to jump over to Win8 Servo 2 now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my network sharing. It's going to take just a moment. And I'm going to do change adapter settings. So check this out. This is pretty cool, right? So now we have our internal one that I have used before. This is our standard network adapter. And we'll go through and we'll take a look at the properties on this. So we have all of the common um, protocols checked and enabled. This is the adapter that I used. And as you can see, only that uh, multiplexing adapter protocol is enabled. And then here's team two. Oh, I fat fingered that. Um, T-E-A-M. Uh, team two. And as you can see there, we can go through and we have all of our various options that we can configure. TCP IP version four, version six. We can set a, a static address here if we like so really cool really powerful features and I I just happened to show you kind of by mistake um, that you can manage very easily other servers um, just from the single pane of glass really really cool and what that's gonna play into is we are gonna go and we're gonna take a look at some really interesting things about file and storage services so if you do work with virtualization, this should look, um, iSCSI will look pretty familiar to you. Um, and as you can see, we have a section here called iSCSI targets. So if you're familiar with VMware, you're very, very familiar with iSCSI targets. And what that is, is it's the encapsulation of SCSI commands into IP packets. It's sent to a SAN or NAS device and then those packets are um, broken out of the IP packet and you can actually use a disk as if it were a local disk instead of a instead of a file share system and uh, Windows now will give you by default an iSCSI target that you can use so and what is most interesting to me is that if you look very carefully what we're gonna do is let's take a look at all servers and I want you to think about some storage devices that you may use right um, let's if you use like an Equalogic or NetApp you're basically using an iSCSI target uh, with multiple hardware you're using uh, NFS maybe if you're using NetApp things like that so let's go and let's look under add roles and features and let's do just simple role based features so this looks pretty familiar you know just a little bit of a different window dressing on it and let's take a look and let's add some of these features to uh, win servo 1 we'll, we'll use that one we could add it on uh, win 8 servo 2 but let's stick with our, our local box here and now I want to take a look specifically and let's look under file and storage services and file services so if you look here, right, we have um, data deduplication. So data deduplication, and this is actually what's requiring my, my machine to restart here. Data deduplication is something that you'd find on a SAN device, so storage attached networking. And what it will do is it will look at blocks of data on your storage subset system, and it will identify redundant data. So let's say, Bob has an Excel spreadsheet and Larry has the exact same Excel spreadsheet, um, it will see that those spreadsheets are the same and basically if you're familiar with Linux, we'll create what is called a soft link or a hard link to that particular place on the disk. Uh, and this is a great way to save um, disk space. So also we have an iSCSI target server, which we were just able to look at and a server for NFS. So what makes this really interesting, if you look at these technologies uh, together, 
I think what Microsoft is going to do with that redundancy feature that we looked at in the NIC teaming, Microsoft really wants to be your sole platform for the infrastructure. Obviously, Microsoft Hyper-V, um, there's a lot of improvements that I'm sure we'll be talking about in future videos. But on the storage end, which really is what interests me more because of how expensive storage devices are, on the storage end, Microsoft is giving small to medium-sized businesses a really great way to get into the home brewed kind of sand market. So what you can do is you could set up, let's say, you know, a, whatever your hardware vendor of choice is, you know, with eight, 12 disks in it and, and provide an NFS service, an iSCSI target service, have the um, data deduplication. You could actually use NFS namespaces, things like that, all in one box. Really, really cool and really, really powerful. Um, and if we let's see if I can actually find it now um, what Microsoft actually does give you is it gives you something called MPIO and maybe under features here you right here multipath IO so if you were familiar with uh, let's say a Dell Equalogic Dell Equalogic would actually give you something called an MPIO driver in order to use multiple Ethernet adapters and hit uh, data stores more effectively if you're using multiple Ethernet adapters to send and receive, da receive data. And now Microsoft is giving you this sort of capability built in and I'm sure what's going to happen is that um, storage providers will be using this, this Microsoft, Microsoft device specific module um, to communicate between their servers and their storage providers. So really kind of interesting stuff. Microsoft is really, really pushing to be your um, your end-to-end -end platform. Uh, you know, whether you like it or you don't like it, that's really what they're pushing for. So um, pretty, pretty interesting stuff here. And I thought, you know, since it's so long since I did a video, I'd do something on Windows Server 8 and, or Server 2012, whatever you'd like to call it. Now I will say, um, in order to get this sort of management, um, I did turn off the firewall on our second server. I don't recommend that. Um, as you can see, I just right clicked and did manage. So you can literally go in and you could just manage all your services. Um, oh, I don't have permissions to do that. Uh, fine. Oh, come on. Cancel. Uh, you can look at all the services that are running on your secondary server. You can do WMI if it's enabled. You can look at the disk management if RPC was turned on. So you can do a lot of really kind of cool things. Um, task scheduler, uh, event viewer. Let's see if we can see the Windows logs. Yeah, of course the Windows logs is slow. Um, it's been slow for a while for those of you that have worked with it. Uh, so you get a lot of really neat features from this single pane of glass and I do like the fact that you can um, I do like the fact that you can search through this. Uh, maybe what Microsoft will do is it will allow you to make groups. That would actually be really really cool if you could make folders um, something like that. Um, add a criteria, server name, qualified domain name. So you have a couple different options to search. So this is it. This is the new interface. Um, if you are not using PowerShell, which um, of course the last video I did a few months ago, you should be looking at PowerShell and I will actually, the next video I do will be a um, more PowerShell video. So this is it. This is what your server administrator life will look like if you're not at the command line. So be very, very familiar with uh, the tools. Um, this is basically where you will go to find everything. This is where you will manage things. Um, and you can actually bump up if you're you know, a little bit hard um, to see. Uh, many people say my videos are hard to see sometimes. So you can actually bump up um, the size uh, here, which it might be a, a nice feature. So thank you again for joining me here this week on windservitudes.com. I promise I will try to make it so that uh, my next videos don't take so long to come out. Again, thank you for everybody that's been following me on YouTube. Um, and thanks for all the really wonderful feedback and support. I'm glad that I can um, help 
Uh, and I, I love doing this and thank you for continuing to watch. Please do submit your feedback, um, some, some comments or what you would like to see out of new videos. And thank you very much. Have a great night and thank you for watching again here on windserve2.com.